Welcome back to the Slam Dunkin' YouTube channel. Uh, I apologize for not posting at all last week as uh, I was very sick and the Kobe death uh, really took a toll on me. But I am back now for this week. And today I want to talk about the major trade that happened last night. Um, Woj tweeted out the mega four uh, team trade uh, that, was with, uh, that was with the Rockets, the Timberwolves, the Nuggets, and the Hawks. So I want to break it down and tell you who the winners and losers uh, are from this trade at the very beginning. Just from the looks of it. And then going forward, what the teams that were involved in the trade should be doing at the trade deadline and into the offseason. So before we get to that, though, leave a like on this video and also subscribe to my channel. Um, so the the major parts of this deal were Clint Capella and Robert Covington. Um, those are the two major players uh, in this deal. The Houston Rockets traded Clint Capella and Robert Covington from the Timberwolves. So... Um, I want to break down each team, and the score does a really good job here with this article from them, uh, going through uh, what, what each team traded and acquired. So I'm just going to go in their order, and I'm going to start off with the Houston Rockets. Now, I think just right off the bat that the Houston Rockets are the biggest losers of this trade immediately. Uh, when I first looked at it, I was like, okay, they got Covington, but like, who else did they get? Because they can't just get Covington for Clint Capella. Um, they got Jordan Bell, but that doesn't really help at all he's not he hasn't he's basically fallen out of the rotation in minnesota and he's not really that great at the center position so that itself i think is a major l and then they got the golden they got golden state's uh second round pick for 2024 so here's what i thought immediately the rockets traded Clint capella for robert covington basically I thought the Rockets could have definitely gotten Clint Capella, like gotten more for Clint Capella than just Robert Covington. Now, basically, though, the idea for the Rockets is that they're gonna go completely small ball. They have PG Tucker, who's six five at the at the starting center spot. Um, they're gonna be shooting a lot more threes, and they're gonna switch everything on defense. Now, just that itself is a terrible idea. I think Daryl Morey has basically just set this team up for failure. Uh, looking at what Clint Capella did for the Rockets, he was, one, the the main rebounder for the Rockets, he was the rim protector for the Rockets, and he also was the main screen screener for the Rockets who was rolling to the basket hard. Now, what this does is that with, with Clint Capella in the pick and roll, and he rolls hard to the rim, it creates open uh, three-point opportunities for the other shooters who are in the corner at the wings. Without that, James Harden and Westbrook are going to have a serious issue running the pick and roll. They basically can't run the pick and roll anymore. Um, and then not to mention defensively, Clint Capella brought so much to this Rockets team that he was the rim protector. Um, and so with Clint Capella down low, you couldn't get into the paint as easy as a lot of other teams don't have a rim protector. Um, now the Rockets don't have a rim protector at all. So any anybody that drives into the lane, it's automatic basically free throws or a layup. Um, Clint Capella also was able to guard, uh, guys like Anthony Davis, Jokic, Rudy Gobert very, very effectively, and taking him out of the picture, I think this really ruins the Rockets' defense as a whole. Now, the Rockets have always done a switch everything defense, so the fact that Clint Capella can switch out onto guards and actually guard them pretty well, that, they're also losing that in this, in this deal. So, yes, Robert Covington's a great defender. He's also a pretty good three-point shooter. He's shooting a little worse from three this season. The issue that I'm seeing the most is that the Rockets just gave up basically their third best player for another guy that they kind of already had. Um, and now it's more now that Daryl Morey is just shifting everything to threes only, I think this Rockets offense just got a, a lot worse and people don't really realize it. The Rockets score basically in four main ways, which is the three-point shot inside the paint. They isolate. And they run the pick and roll. That's what made them so effective. And people always think, like, oh, they, they just shoot threes and layups only. But what made them really effective was James Harden's isolation and also the pick and roll and Clint Capella's lob threat. Now you take away the pick and roll. So now there's only three ways that the Rockets can really score. The three-point shot is very inconsistent. So let's say that the three-point shot is gone in a game. Now the Rockets have only two ways of being able to score. And that's getting to the rim and isolating. And now James Harden is the main... Uh, part of the isolation so with James Harden if he is not able to have a good game there goes the isolation the Rockets have only one way of scoring and that's getting inside the paint and that's really easy to, to defend 
Now, that's probably not going to happen every single game, but come playoff time, we've seen it already. They missed 27 straight three-point shots. If you just take away the three-point shot, they're basically down to two ways of scoring, and that puts a lot of pressure on James Harden, Westbrook, and the other players that make their shots. So, I think the Rockets did not get enough for Clint Capella in this deal. They traded a first-round pick in this deal. They got Covington, who's basically a guy that they kind of already had in Eric Gordon. Um, and I think they just hurt themselves on both sides of the ball. So... Right now, I think the Rockets just took the major, like the biggest L ever. But Daryl Morey needs to make another uh, ac uh, transaction here because they cannot run PJ Tucker at the five, especially in the playoffs, because that is not going to work. They faced the Charlotte Hornets last night. They won, but they got out rebounded 53 to 41 with PJ Tucker starting at the five, and Cody Zeller, the biggest player on Charlotte Hornets, played only 13 minutes. That itself is astounding that they got out-rebounded by the Charlotte Hornets, who are, have uh, not that many big men, and Cody Zeller did not play a, a lot in that game. And um, the Rockets only won that game due to their three-point shot. They made 23s, but it was against the 27th-rate defense. I'm not liking this with the Rockets at all. I think they just took themselves out of contention, unless Daryl Morey makes another major move here and can fleece a GM. But I don't see it happening. Rockets... I give them basically a D minus on this trade. I think this was a terrible trade because um, Clint Cabela does a lot that doesn't always show up in the box score, but Daryl Morey's all about the analytics now, and this is purely an analytics type move. So I'm sorry to say, but the Rockets, I'm giving a D minus for this trade. I think it was a terrible trade for them. So moving on to the next team, though, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I have to. I think this is very disappointing for Minnesota because they were actually trying to go get D'Angelo Russell, and with 48 hours before the deadline, or really 36-ish, no, 48, um, they decided to just not really go for it, and they just settled on getting a first rounder, which is about like going to be like 16th overall. Um, they traded Covington for basically that, and then they uh, traded Noah Vonley, who was actually a pretty decent player. Um, for a bunch of guys that Malik Beasley's pretty good, but Hernan Gomez and Vanderbilt were not in the Nuggets rotation, so I doubt they're going to be in the Timberwolves rotation. And they got Evan Turner, whose major contract is only one year, so that's that's good for them because it's ex it's expiring. Um, they got the first round pick, but I definitely thought they could have gotten maybe a little bit more for Covington. And they also traded Shabazz Napier, who's like the only point guard on the roster currently, because the Jeff Teague trade happened, and now Shabazz Napier is gone, so they really don't have a point guard. Um, Evan Turner can run point guard, and so can Jarrett Culver, but it really, like, they struggle when they don't have a point guard out there, and the Timberwolves, I just think, I think this is more just like, we need to get off salary for, uh, future years, so they did that, but I think they could have gotten a little bit more for Covington, and probably didn't have to trade Shabazz Napier, um, but I expect them to make, uh, a, a trade, uh, in the next couple of hours, to be honest, because, uh, they're still in the playoff hunt, and Cat is getting very upset with them. So I think the Timberwolves need to make a trade very, very soon to show Cat that they're still a good, good organization and should still stay in Minnesota. I'm gonna give them as of right now like a C plus, but the issue is like I don't think I can grade this trade until the deadline is over. Um, I do think it does help them in, in the later years that you don't have Covington's contract on your books. Um, you're taking a shot with Malik Beasley, who shouldn't be too expensive, but uh, Evan Turner coming in is just a one-year deal. That helps clear a lot of money off the books. So, give him a C+, plus, but that grade, that grade is going to probably change um, once the deadline is over. So, Minnesota, they did okay in this. I'm not the biggest fan of it, though. Uh, moving to the Atlanta Hawks. I think the Hawks 100% won this deal. If you really think about... The, what the Hawks just did. They traded a first round pick, which is going to be about 16th overall, so mid middle of the pack, uh, a second round pick, and they traded Evan Turner for Clint Capella. They basically traded those three things, which was not a lot, for the starting center of their future, who can run pick and roll with Trey Young, who is on a very team friendly type contract, and they got it for basically nothing. Um, in my opinion, this is probably like the best thing for the Atlanta Hawks because they're uh, they were rumored to go get Drummond, but Drummond's uh, probably gonna be a free agent this upcoming offseason. So now you have Clint Capella for three more years on a very good deal, so it doesn't uh, ruin your cap space. 
and you're not risking all your assets if you like if you would go get Drummond that you're risking him deciding potentially to not come back to the Atlanta Hawks. Capella's under contract for three years, and I think he's going to actually really flourish and show that he's not going to just average 14 and 14 with the Atlanta Hawks, but he's probably going to average a lot more and be an even bigger part of the defense for the Atlanta Hawks because they don't really have a defense right now. So, for me, I think the Atlanta Hawks, they get an A on this trade because they just basically went out and got their center of the future for basically nothing, and they don't have to spend as much money as they probably would have had to spend if they went to go get a center in free agency. They still have a lot of cap space uh, that they can use for free agency. So I give the Atlanta Hawks an A, and I think they're the clear winners of this deal. Um, I am shocked, though, that the Houston Rockets just traded Clint Capella for nothing, and the Atlanta Hawks got Clint Capella for basically nothing. Um, So Atlanta did a great job with this deal. And then the final team is the Denver Nuggets. They traded... Um, Malik Beasley, Hernan Gomez, and Vanderbilt, um, and they got uh, Gerald Green, who they're going to waive, Noah Vonley, who I think is actually going to be really nice for them, uh, Kade Bates Diop, if you know, you know, king in the fourth quarter, and uh, Houston's first round pick. So, I've already seen a lot of reactions for Denver that it's actually, a lot of people are saying that the trade for Denver is actually really not that good. Um, I actually think that they, this is actually a pretty decent deal for Denver. It's not the greatest, obviously, but you basically got a first-round pick for two guys that don't even play and Malik Beasley, who is going to be a restricted free agent this summer. That itself, I think, is a W for Denver, that you got a first-round pick for guys that aren't playing and a guy that is going to ask for probably too much money uh, this offseason. So that is a W. Then, I think getting uh, Noah Vonley is actually a pretty good uh, good thing for the for the Nuggets because Paul Millsap's getting older, and now Noah Vonley, who's an okay defender and he can shoot the ball a little bit, can come in and play the power forward spot. I think he fits alongside uh, Jokic really, really well. Um, now, there is questions, you know, with contracts and everything like that with Vonley, but I think he's, I think he's fine. Um... I think he's going to fit in with Denver very, very well. Um, and not to mention that they also got Green, who they're just going to wave. And Diop is also another wing that could come in and uh, fill in for any injuries. But um, the biggest thing for me with Denver is it's kind of like with the Timberwolves that this the grade for this deal is going to be based on the end of the trade deadline. I think Denver is about to make another uh, major splash for their bench. Um because Malik Beasley was a major part of their bench. Um, they still got Torrey Craig. They still uh, got Morris. Uh, but they do probably need another wing off the bench that is going to be very consistent and can defend and shoot threes. So I expect them to make another move. And they just got that Houston first round pick. So they can definitely uh, take that pick and ship it off somewhere else and go get another player for them. Uh, so as of right now, before the trade deadline, my grade for the Denver Nuggets is a B+. Plus maybe like a B, and I expect that to go up higher because they basically just got another roster spot for them um, and traded away guys that really weren't even playing, and they're probably going to turn it into something actually really helpful for them. So Denver, it's you got to wait on them for a little bit. Wait till the end of the trade deadline, then you can really grade this trade. But I think personally, Denver did a pretty good job in this, that they traded guys that really weren't playing and guy that was going to be a free agent for a first-round pick and some other assets that they could probably flip and go get a guy that's going to really help them off the bench. So, I think Denver did a good job. Now, just to review the trade again, I really don't think the Rockets did it, got enough for Clint Capella. I think the Rockets made a humongous mistake because Clint Capella was a huge part of their team. Um, now they can't run a pick and roll. Their offense is going to be much more limited, um, and now their defense is basically non-existent in the paint. So, LeBron James right going right to the rim, there is no rim protector. Um, and then... There is nobody to guard guys like Anthony Davis, Nicole Jokic, Rudy Gobert. Not to mention now that their rebounding is going to probably be atrocious because their center is 6'5". T.G. Tucker's good, but he he can't box out Rudy Gobert consistently. And that's just fact. Uh, Timberwolves, you just got to wait on them. I think they did okay, but I'm not the th- most thrilled with this deal. thought they could have got more for Covington as a lot of contenders are looking for a guy like Covington. Um... But they got uh, they got the first round pick, and they got Malik Beasley, who's kind of just a shot in the dark, um, hoping it turns out well. And they cleared out money for the future, so that's also good for them. The Atlanta Hawks think I won this. I think they just won this deal completely. 
Um, they got the center of the future on a team friendly contract that is going to be perfect with Trey Young and John Collins. Um, and they basically got it for basically nothing. So Atlanta Hawks definitely won this deal. And then the Nuggets, like I said, you just have to wait on them for a little bit to decide, to actually grade this trade for them. And I expect them to make uh, another deal very, very soon. So those are my thoughts on this mega four-team trade with 12 players in it. Um, kind of hard to keep track of everything as it, there are a lot of pieces moving. But um, I'm definitely excited to see the Atlanta Hawks uh, with Clint Capella because I definitely think Clint Capella is going to flourish down in Atlanta. And I really think the Rockets, unfortunately, they just, I almost will say right now that unless there's another move made that solidifies the big man spot, I think they just took themselves out of contention for winning the title at all. Because um, now I don't see how they're going to even have any chance of defending either LA teams or the Jazz um, in the Western Conference. So those are my thoughts on this trade. Uh, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Twitter at Duncan underscore white 14 uh, for my initial reactions to this. Um, and make sure you leave down in the comment section below who do you think won this mega four-team 12-player uh, deal.